are many decisions still to come with the investigation into Madeline Soto's death. So tonight, State Attorney for Orange and Osceola Counties, Andrew Bain, is joining us in studio. So first, let's start with what went into the decision to file these first-degree murder charges today, and why did it take seven weeks to add them? All right. Well, first of all, good evening. How are you? Very good. And I uh, want to say it's Denim Day uh, for Sexual Violence Awareness um, Month and Awareness. Uh, so definitely wanted to give a shout out to um, uh, our VSC family, uh, the Victim Service Center, and all the work that they're doing uh, for our victims in our community. Uh, well, it took, uh, you know, it took a good time, but it wasn't as long as it usually is. So a death investigation usually takes around five to six weeks at a minimum. Um, and sometimes it can be really long. And so this we were able to get done in about seven and a half weeks. Uh, we looked at all the evidence that we were able to collect from uh, all the different scenes that were involved in this case and then we were able to present that to the grand jury and return a first degree murder indictment. Can you give us any information about what went into the first degree murder charge? Well, I'd only tell you what's in the indictment right now. Uh, so the law prohibits us from disclosing facts of the case until um, the uh, defendant has the opportunity to engage in discovery if he chooses to do so. So let's talk about the death penalty. What factors will go into whether or not this becomes a death penalty case or not? So there are certain statutory aggravators that are in our Florida statutes that allow us to seek the death penalty. And so we have to make sure that we have those aggravators before we even have the conversation. But even after we, once we have those aggravators, we have to make sure that the mitigators don't out outweigh the aggravators. And we have to just then make a decision about whether we're going to give the people a chance to uh, elect that option if they would like. Is there any sort of timeline for that of when you'll make that decision? Well, it has to be done 45 days after his arraignment. Okay. So there's still like several weeks before uh, we get to that point. Uh, he probably should be at initial appearances in the next day or two, and then uh, he'll move to an arraignment date uh, a few weeks after that. And then after that point, that's when the clock really starts running. So let's talk about the new information that we've learned, us as the public today, yeah. about this case, that Maddie's body was dumped before she was even reported missing. Do you expect to file more charges against other people? Will there be additional arrests in this case? Well, right now is an open, ongoing investigation. Uh, Stephen Stearns is our main suspect in that investigation, and obviously the charge that charges, all the charges are directed towards him at that moment, this moment. And so we're going to continue to work the case and see where it goes. This case has gotten a lot of attention, um, particularly because of what it appears she has been through through the last few years. Can you tell us, give us some insight into what Madeline Soto's life was like the last couple of years and maybe what her final moments were like? I, I can't tell you uh, a lot about the facts of all the cases. Um, I can tell you based on, obviously, the number of charges that we've had to charge um, Mr. Stearns with, uh, you know, is pretty horrific and uh, violent. Uh, past and life and existence for her for the last um, several years. What do you want the public to know about your office and what it's doing for this case? We're doing every can, everything we can to bring justice for Madeline Soto, uh, for her family, uh, for our community, so we can have that closure that we all want to have and be safe in our community. Uh, so that's why our, our, the thing that our office is always going to do. We're always going to look and make sure that we're addressing the most violent offenders in our community and we're making sure that we're going to keep our community safe from those violent people when we have the opportunity to do so. All right, State Attorney, thank you so much for joining us in studio.